Thank you for listening to the Mutual Audio Network. Please, don't turn that dial. The following audio drama is rated PG-13, suggesting that children under the age of 13 should listen accompanied with an adult. Hello there. I'm Edward Champion, the writer and showrunner of... And I'm the receptionist. Uh, I'm sorry? Do you know that there are three different types of celery? Uh... There's self-blanching. He acts like an animal, has an animal's habits, eats like one, moves like one, talks like mine. Ah, yeah, the big Kowalski. Wait, wait, wait a minute. Uh, where did you come from? There's also celeriac, a celery with a large swollen root good for antioxidants and vital minerals. Animal, vegetable... But most people eat green stalk celery. That's what's known as Pascal. Uh, A wager with peanut butter? Why, yes! But just between you and me, I prefer hot dogs. Are you... The receptionist, yes. Ah, receptionist? That's the receptionist? Uh, Receptionist, what do you know about Pascal's wager? Well, it puts forth the proposition that humans are willing to put their lives on the line to determine if God exists. Uh, you do know that you're a fictitious character, right? But I'm quite real. Well, see, that's just it. Uh, I think you may have come from my brain. But I was hatched! Yes, you were. Um, as I was saying, I'm the writer and showrunner of The Grey Area, and I'm hoping you can help me. How? Well, we're speaking to our listeners. Uh, We need you to stay alive, receptionist. Oh, no. Is the universe in danger? Not exactly. You mentioned Pascal's wager. How much are you willing to put yourself on the line? What do you mean? Do you believe in a god? That's up to the boss. Well, I'm not the boss, but I am the one here transcribing your voice. The funny thing is, is that I don't know anything about celery. You know, now that you mention it, I do sometimes hear a keyboard tapping when I'm thinking about the best way to return a ping-pong volley. Anyway, the receptionist is one of many lovely characters that you hear on the gray area. And in order to keep him going... But I'm doing just fine. I ran six miles just this morning. In order to keep the receptionist running six miles each morning... And eating hot dogs... And eating hot dogs... And jumping on trampolines and building sandcastles on the beach... In order to ensure that the receptionist can do all of these exciting things... Are you acquainted with the works of Tony Danza? We need your help. Buy a season pass so that the receptionist and his friends can continue to have many exciting adventures. And hot dogs. Don't forget the hot dogs. With the season pass, you'll get instant access to all 19 episodes where you can binge all of the episodes today as they are produced rather than wait eight months. You'll be able to read all of the scripts and listen to our behind-the-scenes podcast, Inside the Gray Area. Most importantly, you'll be helping to support independent audio drama. Think of this as a wager of sorts that allows us to keep telling stories and paying wages to our actors. After all, if you're willing to bet on the deity... But I've never been to Atlantic City. Uh, the season pass is a little classier than that receptionist. Oh, good. I wouldn't want to get anyone in trouble. You won't. Go to grayareapod.com and support independent audio drama. Your support will help keep the show going. Previously on The Gray Area... Doctor, what's wrong? You're wrong, and you can't be helped. Get out! But I... Leave! You're a real hero here, Mr. Sutton. You know, I've always looked up to you. Yes. Well, we can talk about that later. Compassion fatigue is nothing to be embarrassed about, Emma. It happens to the best of us. Previously on The Gray Area. Do you know about Eclipse Ale? Joanna, he just reads the copy. You're a real hero I never here, told Mr. you that the only discovery Columbus ever made was how lost he was on the high seas. I can do this. I can do this. Build a buffer. Be open, gentle, compartmentalize. Pain is normal. Don't take too much of it on. Don't blame others. Hello, Dr. Powers! Just one minute. Emma, you are here as a professional. People have great strength inside them, even when they're hurt. Excuse me. Do I wait out here? Oh, are you in there? Do you need me to read a magazine? And how much of it should I read? Uh, you can come in. Oh, good. Well, bless my stars and call me a constellation. This is a very comfy couch. You're a little... Excited? Why, yes I am. I've never done anything like this before. Wait a minute. I know you. Aren't you Jack's receptionist? Did he refer you? Jack? Who's Jack? Never mind. We don't talk anymore. 
Well, I am a receptionist. The receptionist, you might say. You're his brother. Oh, I have no brothers. Or sisters. Siblings tend to get in the way of serving other people. Are you familiar with Occam's razor? Yes. Good. Then you understand. We'll get along just fine. Our relationship here is purely professional. I am here to listen to you. And I'm here to chat. I am, after all, the receptionist. And that's what you do? You're a receptionist? Who referred you to me? Why, Greg Sutton, of course. Greg? How's he doing? He's dead. Dead? What happened? Sorry, I'm going to need to take this in. Focus. Focus. Are you feeling all right, Dr. Powers? Yes, I'm fine. I'm just getting my bearings, that's all. But thank you for telling me. This is a good test run. What happened to Greg? While his death was sudden and quite painful, I assure you that it was not by his own hand. I was sad to see him go, but we do have to see the upside in everything. Do you feel detached? Detached? Removed. Socially isolated. Why, no. I don't have anyone to serve at the present time, but it's not stopping me from blowing bubbles. Blowing bubbles? Or playing hopscotch on a rainy day. Do you know that the playground is very underpopulated when it's stormy outside? Won't you catch a cold? Oh, I don't mind. Why don't you just go out on a sunny day? Ah, but that's what everyone does. And I'm not everyone. You don't like people? Oh, I like people very much. But I tend to excel at these pastimes when no one's around. So, you knew Greg. Are you grieving, Mr... Receptionist! Are you experiencing any sense of loss? Yes. Sometimes. Mr. Sutton was a very important man. A good and kind man. I doubt that I'll find a traveler who operated on his level. Do you know he was a prince? A prince? Uh, I don't think so. Oh, but he was. And you were some kind of footman? Yes. I do like feet very much. Even when they smell. Feet always remind us that we're connected to the earth. Why, we couldn't go anywhere without them. Why are you here? Because you saw him. Greg? Yes! And maybe if I know what you said to him... I'm afraid that's protected by doctor-patient confidentiality. But he's no longer a patient. He's no longer alive. Those are the rules. The... Receptionist, what are you feeling right now? An overwhelming sense of joy. An occasional feeling of sadness. Without someone to serve, I'm afraid, Doctor, that I'm a bit at a loss about how to function. Hmm. What about your childhood? My childhood? Your earliest moments. What's the first thing you remember? I was hatched. I've always been like this. Uh, what do you think would complete you? What is it that you want? The return of Greg Sutton to regular existence. I'm very sorry he's gone. Oh, but I think you can bring him back. Greg said you were a great doctor. He did. He said that you gave him the idea about how to start the radio station. So you're just as important as he was. Uh, you do know that death is final. Nobody can bring him back. Oh, but I think you can. If you'll excuse me. Ah, here it is. Oh my god, that's... Mr. Sutton's head, yes. I can't even... You see, if we just attach Greg's head to a healthy torso, he'll be talking again in no time. You... You killed him! No, no! It wasn't me! I'm not a violent person! I'm calling the police! Now, please, don't do that. I only came here to see if you could bring Mr. Sutton back to life. He said you were a good doctor. But that... That's just not possible. I... I don't know what to say. Just say that you'll help me. You're the head doctor. What? The doctor who fixes heads. You killed him. Jesus Christ! Why, well, no! Not at all! No, please, back away! I can defend myself! There's no need! I mean you no harm! I just want Greg back! If you hurt me in any way... But I'm non-violent! Hello? 911? Yes. There's a man in my office with a severed head. I'm not a man. I'm the receptionist. Uh, he's tall, dark hair, very thin, highly exuberant, suffering from an affective disorder. Are you a doctor, ma'am? Yes, I'm a doctor. Look! Yep. 
He could be dangerous, either to himself or others. Please hurry. No, I can't flee the scene. There's just one door. A door? Is it one of those special doors? What? The doors that open into other universes. No. No, he's not being violent. He just has this head. A severed head. I really don't see what the big deal is. Thank you. Concentrate. Concentrate. You've been in tough scrapes before. Dr. Powers, is everything okay? No, it's not okay. I'm sorry. Oh, it's quite all right. What is that? It's a Louisville slugger. Don't think that I won't use it. Oh, are we going to play baseball? Is it one of the 32 or 33 or 34 lengths? You know, I've always felt that the longer bats were the better ones. No, we're not going to play baseball. This is self-defense. Oh, no. Is there someone outside? Self-defense if you try anything with me. The police will be arriving shortly. Oh, dear. I told you not to call them. And why don't you want the police involved? Well, they do tend to shoot people, often when they're not armed. Is that what you're afraid of? Facing consequences for your actions? I told you before, Dr. Powers. I wouldn't harm a fly. I'm here to guide people. Guide people? Travelers, you know. There are quite a few of them. And because of that, there has to be quite a few of us. Receptionist... Let's say that you didn't kill Greg. Oh, but I didn't. Well, you can't just walk around the city with a severed head. Why not? Because it's... it's inconsiderate. Inconsiderate? Why, it's no different than the rude people with their umbrellas. What? Oh, you know. You're walking down the street on a rainy day, and you run into a man holding a massive umbrella, one that's far too big for him. People try to get around him, but the circumference of the umbrella canopy matches the length of the sidewalk. Oh, God. Oh, are you a religious person, Dr. Powers? I'm not. Emma? (sighs) Emma, you can do this. This will pass. Peace is within my reach. Relax. Ease. I will stay calm and carry on. Are you okay, Dr. Powers? What are you saying? My mantras. This isn't a normal session. Stay there. But I'm not going anywhere. You look troubled. I had a few things happen to me, but peace is within my reach. Dr. Powers, NYPD, can we come in? Just a minute. The police, oh no. Receptionist, they are here to help. Dr. Powers. It's going to be okay. Dr. Powers. No, it isn't. There's no way out. Nobody is going to harm you. Dr. Powers. Okay, well, I'll just leave the head then. Oh, is that a window? No, don't! Dr. Powers. This may be a bit trickier than finding a postman who speaks Dutch. Dr. Powers. Don't! If you don't open the door, we're going to have to break it down. Receptionist, no! It's six floors! You'll hurt yourself! Oh, don't worry about me. Dr. Powers. I'm as resilient as a Siamese fighting fist changing the colors just before courting a mate. Okay, we're busting the door. Don't! Five, four, three, two, one. Thank you, Doctor. One. Nobody move. Ta-ta, officer! No! Geronimo! He just... Jumped out. Yes. Barney, you better go downstairs. It's okay! I'm all right! What? Toodaloo, doctor! And thank you! But he... Nobody could have survived that. Yeah. You see a lot of funny things in this line of work. So do I. Is he going to be okay? Barney's on the case. We'll be able to track him down by foot. What he did was... Impossible? Yeah, I know. I'm afraid I'm going to have to ask you a few questions for the report. Peace is within my reach. Peace is within my reach. Say, lady, there's no need to say that. You're safe. Sorry. I was just preparing myself for your questions. You've been listening to The Head Doctor, episode 9.5 of The Gray Area. It was written and directed by Edward Champion. Colette Thomas appeared as Emma, Mike Lynch appeared as the police, and Zach Glassman appeared as the receptionist. The associate producers were Morgan Corcoran and John Osborne. Sound design, editing, engineering, and mastering by a bald man in Brooklyn with an alleged 32-inch waistline that is probably two or four, or (coughs) um, a few inches more than what has been reported. 
If you like what you have heard and you don't want to wait two weeks from now for a new episode, consider supporting this program by going to grayareapod.com and buying a Season 2 pass. For only $20, you'll have instant access to 19 episodes for this season. We're putting them all out under the premium feed as we finish them. You'll also get copies of all the scripts and our premium behind-the-scenes podcast, Inside the Gray Area. You'll get a 1,000 pages of scripts and about 400 minutes of extra bonus material. We spent more than two years making the second season, and all the actors were paid. We have a four-season plan in place for the Gray Area, and we want to keep this program going. Buy a Season 2 pass, and you'll be supporting independent audio drama and helping to keep our show alive. That's at grayareapod.com, G-R-A-Y-A-R-E-A-P-O-D. Also... If you enjoyed this show, you can also leave us a review on iTunes so that more listeners are aware of the rather insane concoction that we are brewing here. You can also find us on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. Just search for Gray Area Pod. Special thanks to Sasha Arnold, Kaz Benjamin, Christopher Bird, Emily Carding, Rebecca Carter, Christian Caminiti, Ron Charles, Kate Christensen, Morgan Corcoran, Adrian Davich, Samuel Delaney, Claudia Berenice Garza, Pam Getchell, Stephen Gillis, Jen Halpert, Daniel Handler, Gabby Jimenez, Argeria Cahayas, Eric Kraft, Pete Lutz, Casey Meyer, Russ Marshall, and Sheila McClear, Tanya Malayevich, Ayo Anatati, Tom Parsons, Amy Pavey, Mark Elliott Stein, Katie Stricker, Scarlett Thomas, Georgia Thompson, Tim Torre, James Wagner, Jack Ward, Dan Wicked, and anybody else I may have missed for their invaluable help, kindness, and feedback. We'll be back in two weeks' time with the first of an exciting seven-part epic called Paths Not Taken. Now, this is an epic love story set in two parallel universes, and the whole saga takes place between a time period of 1994 and 2023. And our first chapter will introduce us to the characters. It's the most ambitious story we've ever produced, and aside from dealing with the strange connections between the personal and the political, this tale explores one vital question that we're often too afraid to ask. Is the person you're in love with the person you're meant to be with? So you're not going to want to miss this. Well, you could listen to it right now if you purchased a season two pass, but no worries. We will have a short preview of this new episode after the closing credits. Until next time, wherever you are in the universe, be good to yourself and kind to others. Thank you for listening. Next time on The Gray Area. I've told my side so many times, to the point where I'm now on autopilot. What if I told you that there was a way to return to the past? I tried to see a head doctor, but she couldn't help me. And you, sir, you're misplaced. Stop eroding responsibility. You've been doing that your whole goddamn life. I know your life story. I've been telling you for months that you are not going to get closure from her. You will be changed. You may even be whole again. I think more people fell for you than you think. For once in your life, Chelsea, be grateful. Fire! Miss Chelsea, this will come a serious breach. In this time of COVID-19, CDC asks you keep your hands clean. Don't congregate and kindly shelter in place. Also wash your hands and don't touch your face. So use soap and water and grab a clean towel. And don't be a Jonah. Prevent spread of Corona by washing your hands. Olay! This was a public service announcement from the Mutual Audio Network.